Hey folks, it's John with KGTropicals.com bringing you episode four of our series KG Q&A. We're answering your questions that you send in to KGQ and A, it's right there, at gmail.com. Send your questions in now. I'm answering them in order. I do not proofread the questions. I just read them and answer them. You're going to get my honest opinion. And again, it is just my opinion. If you disagree, that's fine. Let's talk about it. We'll have some fun. All right, first question is from Kyle Colburn. Hey, this is Wild Frontoza, and I have a question to ask you. Hmm, you don't say. I also want to thank you for taking the time to read this. You are very welcome, sir. Now, since you're a fish breeder and seller, do you ever have a problem with customers only buying males, but not females? If so, where do they go, or who do they go to? I would assume if a female was sold that they would be go to customers who is going to breed the strain of peacock. All right, there are two different kinds of people, well, really three types of people that buy females. One is the people who only buy unsexed fish because they buy them for cheaper and they can get a lot more fish that way uh, and they end up with females. Number two would be someone who doesn't care. Uh, they just like fish and they want a bunch of fish in their tank and it doesn't bother them that there might be aggression or there might be breeding. Uh, and then the third person is other breeders. Uh, we ship females all the time to people that order from us. Um, you know, we're one of the few places where you can order males, you can order females. If you want to start a breeding colony, we can take care of you on that. Um, and so we send females to people all the time. I've had people that order nothing but females. So, and those people are breeders. So, um, we do sell a lot more males than we do females, naturally. Uh, not as much with Imbunas, but particularly Peacocks and Haps. Uh, the males are always the ones to go first, and they cost more, and that's what everybody wants. But um, we don't have a problem selling females. We don't get stuck with a lot of females. Um, there's always somebody looking for them. If we didn't have the website and we were just selling in the store, we probably would get stuck with a lot of them. But, um, but we sell quite a bit of females on the website. Uh, James Largo, I think, has bought... 24, 36 females from us uh, in the last month. So, you know, we don't have a big problem getting rid of them. Um, I think you may have been going somewhere with the question, like, do, do some breeders get rid of females, cull females? I don't know. Uh, I don't. And the supplier that I buy from doesn't uh, because we look at them as producers. I mean, why should I get rid of a fish that I can spawn with other fish of the same strain and get a bunch of fish that I can later sell. So I don't think any breeders are, are culling females um, because they can produce too much for them. So uh, I think that might have been where you were going with the question, so I thought I would throw that in there. All right. Um, this is from Isaac. Dear John, you are probably flooded with mail by now. Yes, I am. So I'm going to make this short. I would like to know what is your top five species as of right now with regards to African cichlids. That's my kind of question. I like that one. Thanks a lot for being the person that you are. There are only a handful of guys that are so passionate about African cichlids. Well, thank you so much, Isaac. Um, that's a great question, and I love it. And it's hard to answer that without thinking about it first because um, I don't have this running list in my head. Um, okay. Uh, well, I know. I'm... I'm confident. Um, top five would be number five, the Insignis. Now, I don't get off on scientific names, folks. I'm, I'm sorry, I don't. I don't feel like scientific names make me look smarter, so I don't use scientific names. Um, I hope everybody's okay. Unedited, how do you like that? So, the Insignis is going to be the first one that I'm going to put on the list at number five. Um, love that fish, the blue with the yellow belly. It just I just, I love that fish. Um, number four, I'm going to go with albino eureka red peacocks. That's my number four. Uh, that's a hard fish to find, and it's hard to find a breeder that is doing really good ones. Uh, love that, how it's kind of the red and the white, and you all know I'm a sucker for albinos, so I would have to have 
and albino in my top five. Number three, I'm gonna go with the Taiwan Reef Hap. I mean, it's a rainbow fish. It's got every color in the world on them. Uh, they get really big, they're absolutely gorgeous, and we sell a ton of them. Number two, the Buconoto. Uh, I like oddball fish. I like fish that don't look like all the others. And so the Buconoto, I absolutely love that one. Again, I've talked about it in other videos. Um, definitely a sucker for fish that have a different shape to them instead of that standard peacock and hap kind of a shape. Uh, I like the fish that look different and the Buconoto definitely does. And the number one, I said it a while back and I haven't changed my mind yet, is the Champsochromus, uh, the trout cichlid. Absolutely bananas over those. Um, again, it looks different when it is full grown, which I've never had one full grown, but they are without a doubt the titan of an African cichlid tank. Um, and I just, I'm gaga for them. Now, a lot of you are gonna yell at me for not having Frontosas on this list. And I'm sorry, he only asked for five. Um, Frontosas, without, a, without any doubt, um, you know, I could put them at, at any number, one through five. Everybody loves Frontosas, I'm no different. But top of my head, and I promise you, I mean, I can show you the screen right now. I'm not looking at a list of my top five. I just came up with that off the top of my head. And I, I can't even repeat it because I don't even remember exactly what it was. But, uh, but there you go. Trout is definitely my favorite. All right, we got time for, oh yeah, we're doing good on time. This question is from Jeremy. I was just curious what got you into Africans or more in general fish keeping or, or in general fish keeping. Was it a certain species or a tank you saw? For me, it was a mammoth frontosa. Here we go again. I saw as a kid hooked slash addicted ever since. Thank you for all you do for the hobby. Well, thank you, Jeremy. Um, I, yeah, I know exactly what it was that got me into fish keeping, uh, and I know what it was for Africans. What got me into fish keeping, I was 17 years old. Um, I went to a local pet store called Creatures and Critters in Woodbridge, Virginia, which is where I lived. And uh, he was going there because he bought a 180 gallon tank that he was setting up in his house. I didn't have a tank at the time. And um, so he went to look for his stuff. I kind of browsed through the store. And in the back of the store, they had a big tank. Don't even remember what size it was. It was the size of the room as far as I was concerned with a silver arowana in it. And that was it for me. Um, they just so happened to be feeding the fish at the time. And when I saw that big bucket of a mouth that that fish had, and I saw the way they just so gracefully skimmed the top of the tank, I, that was it. And I immediately uh, bought a tank, got it all cycled, got the arowana, and then ended up having to buy him a bigger tank and a bigger tank. And um, arowanas are something, you guys know me as an African cichlid guy, but arowanas are absolutely what got me into fish keeping. Uh, if you go back, so I think the second or third video that I ever did, which was a tour of my garage, you will see that the 240 that you all have seen with all my Africans in it was actually bought to house two silver arowanas. Uh, the, the larger one that we had was about 30 inches long. He was gargantuan. Uh, his name was Sully. I uh, absolutely loved that fish. He jumped out of the tank on Father's Day. I'm brushing my teeth Father's Day morning. I'm all excited. I'm like, all right, this is my day. This is really cool. And Lisa comes upstairs and says, uh, Sully's on the floor of the garage. Um, this isn't a, a, a show about arowanas, but I'm going to tell you this. Get yourself a good, heavy lid. And when I say heavy, I mean heavy if you're going to get into arowanas. I had quarter-inch thick glass lids on that 240. I still do. And I had bricks on it and he still knocked that off and ended up on the floor. That's a 30 inch fish. They got a lot of power and they are jumpers. Uh, so that broke my heart. The other one literally died a week later. Water was perfect. We just say it's from a broken heart. Um, that's what got us through it anyway. That was devastating. I have not had an arowana ever since, um, but that was, that was a while back when that happened. Um, as far as what got me into Africans, uh, I had an empty tank and I had to have something to put in it. Uh, <laughs> I had kept Africans for a long time, but I was never what you would consider to be an African cichlid guy. But I had an empty tank, 
um, that I was using as a hospital tank and the fish got better so I put it back in the other tank and this tank was empty couldn't have an empty tank a uh, local pet store was doing a special on assorted peacocks I bought 12 of them I think it was and uh, and a big male OB and if I have any pictures of them I'm gonna have to put him up because he was one of the most gorgeous OBs that I've ever seen in my life I paid $70 for this fish he was like five inches I got ripped off on him but he was gorgeous put him in there with all of the others and like a month later I'm doing routine maintenance and found fry uh, about 40 fry hiding behind a rock in the back of the tank and it changed everything my entire focus at that point went to breeding Africans it was a blast um, and I haven't looked back since Lisa went in full steam with me um, she was into it too and breeding fish just added that extra level to the hobby it, it just added a whole nother element to the hobby that we just absolutely ran with and it turned into a business and now you know I'm completely broke uh, with a pet store but we're growing and it's having we're, we're, we're doing well I'm having a lot of fun with this series folks I'm having a lot of fun with this business uh, I've had some questions recently about the fish business and uh, things like that which I'm not gonna get to for a while because they're way up on the list but um, I saw it in the little preview of the email so I did kind of preview uh, was, I saw that it was a personal question so I did preview that one so I cheated on that one I'm sorry but uh, let's see we've got six more emails before we get to that one so uh, that is one of the ones that I did cheat on but um, I don't remember where I was going if you have questions that don't have to do with fish if they're about the fish business and all that kind of stuff you can ask them I can't promise that I'm gonna answer them um, because you know I, I'm not I, I'm trying to help people keep fish I'm not necessarily trying to help people become my competition but I have no problem answering questions especially if it was something that I really struggled with um, I, I'll certainly help you out anyway I'm completely rambling on at this point and we're at 12 minutes so I gotta cut this one off thank you so much to Jeremy Isaac and Kyle Co Colburn for the questions today. I'm getting manic here. Thank you guys so much for watching. Send your questions in. The email's right there. Send the questions in. KGQA at gmail.com. We'll see you on the next episode.